Hello and welcome to another Pocket Talk. This is Chris the Pocket Master and I'm here to talk about my top 10 favorite arcade games of all time. This is not an official list by any means, so don't take this so seriously. However, if you disagree with one of my choices, please leave your thoughts in the comments below. Also, if you have a top 10 list of your own, please share them with me whether it's a video link or a list in the comments. I do love seeing other people's lists, so without further ado, let's get started. Number 10. Hang On. Hang On is one of the first games of its kind. It is definitely a game that was ahead of its time. The graphics were top notch and the actual arcade cabinet made you feel like you were on an actual motorcycle because it was a replica of a motorcycle with a monitor attached to it. It is a very difficult game to beat, but once you master the tracks, it is beatable. The way I found out about this game was back in 98 or 99 when I played Shemnu on the Dreamcast. Within that game, there is an arcade called the U Arcade where you can play Hang On and Space Harrier, which leads me to... Number 9. Space Harrier. Again, I found out about this game in Shemnu back in the day. You play as the space guy and he's flying around shooting at crazy enemies. The enemies you will see are jets, these moth looking things, dragons, two headed dragons, and many more. Like hang on, the graphics in this game were ahead of its time. Every time I talk to people that experienced this game in the 80s, they always said this game was the game that blew them away, especially when the stages speed up. They also mentioned that the original Space Harrier cabinet had no slowdown. I only found that the Shemnu version of Space Harrier had no slowdown, but I never played the actual arcade cabinet of this game, unfortunately. Number 8. Alien vs Predator I played this game at a restaurant of all places. Yeah, back in the 90s, every store, 7-Eleven, grocery store, doctor's office, laundromat, and restaurant had their own arcade cabinet, which was why I loved going out to places when I was a kid. Now I hate it out there. <laughs> but Alien vs Predator on the arcade was so awesome. It is your standard beat em up where you could pick Lin Kurosawa who uses a sword and a gun. You could also pick Dutch Skyfer, who has a gun on his arm but is slow as hell. And two predators which are a hunter predator and a warrior predator. I like picking Lynn because she is fast and I could last a pretty good while before I have to insert another coin. I remember my brothers and I playing this game a lot at Poncho's. I also remember the employees giving my little brother Josh a stool to stand on because he was so damn short when he was about four years old. Number 7. Battletoads. This was an arcade game that I played at CeCe's Pizza a long time ago. Yeah, CeCe's was known for having a small game room in the back. Battletoads for the arcade was your traditional beat em up. It did turn into a platforming game, however, it didn't really change up genre like the console versions did. But that didn't change the fact that this game was a whole lot of fun. You get to pick all of the Toads, Rash, Pimple, and Zits. I know those names are so disgusting, but that was their names. Their outrageous power attacks are even more outrageous in this game. It is everything a fan of Battletoads would want in a short arcade game. Number 6. Tekken Tag Team Tournament Now I have played a lot of Tekken games in the arcades like Tekken 2, Tekken 3, and even Tekken Dark Resurrection and 7. But none of them hit me like Tekken Tag Team Tournament for the arcade. I first played this game in an arcade within El Central Mall in McAllen, Texas, which is now torn down. But when I played this arcade game, it was the first time I was seeing Tekken Tag Team Tournament, 
we all thought it was coming out on the PlayStation 1, but the PS2 came out, and Namco updated the graphics and added so much to it. Before I knew any of that was going to happen, I was at the arcade playing Tekken Tag Team Tournament, and I was just appreciating everything about the game as far as the new fight mechanics, return of past characters, and meeting new people in the arcade. I was still in awe that I was playing the new Tekken game, and that awe was amplified when it came out on the PS2 with updated graphics. Number 5. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 I am sure this game is on a lot of lists, but it is on mine too. I mean, I'm not too good at this game, but I can just appreciate the art, the speed, all of the characters, and the whole idea behind Marvel vs. Capcom 2. You had characters from Capcom, Street Fighter, Darkstalkers, Resident Evil, Mega Man, and more. You also had characters from Marvel's X-Men, Captain America, Spider-Man, Iron Man, and more. I first played this game at CeCe's Pizza, and I remember lots of people just huddle around this cabinet all the time. It wasn't just at CeCe's, it was everywhere when this game came out on the Dreamcast, and everyone went out to play it. Every time I saw it, two people or more were battling it out. If you find an arcade today and happen to see Marvel vs. Capcom 2, I bet you will see people surrounding it. Back in the day, I remember hearing older kids at my school saying, Oh, they just put a MVC2 arcade in Walmart. Oh my gosh, we've got to go. I've got to fight you. It was an exciting time, but it was also around that time when arcades were coming to an end. Number 4. Four, Art of Fighting 2. Oh, this game really pisses me off, but it is on my top 10 list because whenever I see it in an arcade, it calls me, it challenges me, and I can't resist the temptation to play this unique piece of software. The first time I played this game was at a movie theater. When I first entered that coin, I was demolished in a matter of seconds. It didn't matter if I knew how to play KOF or Street Fighter, none of those games could have prepared me for my first time playing Art of Fighting 2. I mean, how could it? I thought I would be fine since I knew who Ryo Sakazaki was and I knew all of his moves, but no! This game was deeper than KOF, it was deeper than Street Fighter. The characters in this game have a stamina bar and could only do special moves if their stamina bar was up. Once it hit red, you can't do anything. Oh, and you've got to love this. Each character has a super move, and you can't perform your super move until you pass the special stage where you have to perform your super move a number of times. I guess if you can't do it in the first place, why bother? Anyways, I know I'm giving this game a lot of shit. It is a really good game. It'll get you better at fighting games. It'll teach you to appreciate your normal attacks and also teach you to zone in other fighters. If you do not learn that lesson from this game, well, I do not blame you because this game is too damn hard. I love the graphics and how it zooms in and out when you move your characters farther from your opponent and closer to your opponent. The sprites have lots of details in them and develop throughout the fight. The characters are so awesome, but I stick with Ryo, Robert, Yuri, and King. King is probably my best character in this game. Number 3. Third Strike Street Fighter This is arguably the best Street Fighter game of all time, and also arguably the best fighting game ever made. I remember first playing it on a Sega Dreamcast. When my big brother popped that disc in, we were hooked. We played for hours trying to master new combos, characters, and new play mechanics like parrying. When we did see this game in the arcades, nobody could beat my brothers and I. It was the game that we were all good at. Aside from the memories, the graphics in this fine piece of software is just beautiful. It is pixel art at its finest. 
Each frame within all characters have been drawn with such great detail, and the backgrounds in every stage is just so visually appealing. The music is so iconic. Everyone who is an arcade fighter will automatically know Third Strike Street Fighter by just hearing it. When I walk into an arcade and they have Street Fighter Third Strike, they usually crank that cabinet all the way up because the music is so good. Oh, and who could forget that iconic moment when Daigo beat Justin Wong? That moment right there changed the way a lot of us play fighting games today and also increased the longevity of Third Strike Street Fighter. Number 2. Fatal Fury Special I have so many fond memories of Fatal Fury Special. I always played the console versions of this game as a kid, and at the time I didn't understand the difference between console and arcade gaming until I actually played Fatal Fury on an arcade. The sound was different, the game was faster, and just overall better. When I was 13 or 14 years old, I was trying to track the actual arcade game down so I could understand why everyone is talking about how the Neo Geo AES and MVS was so great. At the time, a lot of arcades were shutting down and selling their cabinets for crazy low prices. Since I didn't have a car, I had an older friend of mine drive me to an arcade about an hour away from home. They were selling Fatal Fury Special with three other games in it for 50 bucks. That just kills me to say that because I had the money but there was no way I could transport the cabinet anywhere. I then begged the arcade owner to let me play it and he did. As soon as I powered it on, I selected Fatal Fury Special and man I realized how much better it was than the Super Nintendo version. I do not think I ever played the SNES version ever again after that day. The game had colorful graphics, fun characters, awesome stages, and a very fair difficulty setting. Geese made an appearance in this game which was so badass. Like Fatal Fury 2, Krauser was the last boss. Unless you beat the game without losing a round, in which case you would fight Ryo Sakazaki from Art of Fighting. The arcade I tried only had two buttons working, which were the buttons I would push for Kim's super move. So I picked him, and I beat the game. At the time, I didn't understand why my super move wasn't working, but the arcade owner said I have to push both kicks at the same time to make the super move work. On the SNES, I only had to push one kick. That's the first time I figured out how super moves in this game worked. It was very different from the ports. Nowadays, I always play this game. However, every time I want to play it, I prefer playing it on the Neo Geo AES. It is one of the three Neo Geo AES games that I own, just because collecting for the Neo Geo is just so damn expensive. But it always brings me back to that time, plugging in the cartridge and playing it on that giant massive Neo Geo AES arcade stick. Number 1. SVC Chaos, or SNK vs Capcom Chaos. The reason why SVC Chaos is number one on my list is because the game has a lot of secrets in it. They are so weird and very difficult to unlock. I love it. For example, if you beat the game fast enough and finish everyone with a super move or ultra super move, you go to the heaven stage and fight Athena as the last boss. If you beat the game by defeating at least one opponent with block damage and finishing off everyone else with super moves or ultras, you'll go to hell and fight Red Airmare as the last boss. Some characters have special endings in heaven and hell, like Dan and Dimitri. It's so weird, but it had everything I never knew that I wanted in an arcade game. I first played this game at a grocery store called Food Town. But when it first came out, I saw it everywhere. Nowadays, I do not see it anywhere. In fact, 
it is pretty rare that I see it anywhere. If I do see it, it is a pirated version. But hey, that's okay. I have a pirated version of this game as well on the Neo Geo AES. And here it is, along with hundreds more. Well there you have it, those were my top 10 arcade games of all time. Yes, they were totally based on nostalgia, but quite honestly, arcades are retro games. They are a thing of the past. If you see a new arcade with a new game, there's a strong chance that someone just put their PC or Raspberry Pi in the cabinet they made, which is totally awesome. Arcades are not totally dead, there's still a number of arcades around the world. Last year, I did a review on Cider Arcade in Houston, Texas. It was an amazing arcade with lots of titles to play. And there's The Flux, an arcade located in McAllen, Texas, which is a video game store when you enter, but has an arcade room in the back. I'm sure there are arcades around you too, you may just have to Google them, which is what I did when I was in Houston and McAllen, Texas. But I do not think there will ever be a time again when you could walk over to a place like a 90s arcade, meet new people whether they were people that had jobs, people that went to school with you but never talked to you until you played them at a game of KOF or something, people that were in gangs, people that were going through some shit, or just ordinary people that spent some time at an arcade to get away from it all. Those times are gone but not forgotten. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. This is Chris the Pocket Master of Phoenix Splash Gaming, signing off. Plus you thought you was clever It's all about the family We stay silent forever Yo, I moved on Now my life is much better Now we on Some bigger things But we hustle forever We cut your life short Plus you thought you was clever It's all about the family We stay silent forever